Hi, this is Little Dwarf and I present to you another episode of my series covering secrets, easter eggs and hidden details in my favorite game of all time, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. The links to previous episodes, as well as additional information and broader context about my findings can be found in the description, so please take a look. This episode will cover the Hollywood hub as well as the surrounding areas, such as the Nosferatu Warrens. This part is significantly shorter, it just becomes harder and harder to find new material as the game progresses, and a lot of things such as funny textures do repeat, so it would be pointless to show them twice. First, there is the line number for the bus that goes back into Santa Monica, 666, the number of the beast, which is of course, a reference to the Biblical Book of Revelation, and specifically to this passage in chapter 13, verse 18. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. Next, there is plenty of interesting things to see in the Internet Cafe. First, there are those texts scratched into the walls above two of the computers. One decries the person occupying the PC as a camper, basically someone in an FPS that hides in one advantageous place for a long time. Some regard it as a cheap tactic. The other reference is a little more cryptic, perhaps. AWP Whore, it says. AWP stands for Arctic Warfare Police, a type of a very powerful sniper rifle, common in many shooters such as Counter-Strike. It's kind of famous there, well, or infamous, depending on your point of view, because it's so powerful that a body shot is usually enough to kill the enemy in one hit, eliminating the needs for a headshot. Because of this, it's sometimes derided as a crutch weapon of sorts, as I understand it, and apparently someone here at the cafe got more than a little frustrated after dying to the AWP for the end time. Next, the posters advertising the various games are kind of funny in it of themselves. I especially like this one about the need to read. Who would have guessed that a quest to eliminate illiteracy would make for a good basis for a video game? It is also an obvious reference to the Need for Speed games, of course. In one of the emails you can read about Clan Chocula, which is a reference to the serial mascot Count Chocula, which by itself was a parody of Count Dracula. The monstrously good part of a complete breakfast. If you crave chocolate too, Count Chocula can satisfy the chocolate monster in you. Next, you can have some fun with the camera screens, in the same way I've shown in the previous episodes. If you leave some items on the ground, they will show on the monitor, as it's a live feed. The same thing can be done in the Metalhead Industries building. Funnily enough, you can also see some reused footage on the monitors from the museum of all places. I doubt it's intentional, or that it means anything, it's just reused assets, but I found it interesting nonetheless. A couple of additional fun details can be found at the Red Stop convenience store. First, there is this possibly stoned guy rumbling in the aisles. He says a lot of things, and some of them, I guess, can be funny in their own right, but the only one possibly counting as an easter egg of sorts is the one where he wonders out loud about being in a video game. You ever think like all the world is one big video game and we are all characters in it? Whoa, that's like deep, man! Next, take a look at this warning about the dangers of smoking. It starts ordinarily enough, but if you stick with it, you can read that the Surgeon General warns that smoking can, among other things, lead to the death of cute little puppies. If that's not a reason to stop smoking, then I don't know what is. There are a lot of mock-up misspelled brands here again. I only recognize a couple. Wallways for always hygienic pads, says as a stand-in for lace, and Cheerios instead of Cheerios. Surely there is more, but I may not be familiar with the original brands to begin with, as I'm not American. The magazines are worth a look at again, among them a magazine named Troika, another direct shoutout to the devs, 
but also Chin and Chin Shop. What would a Chin Shop even be exactly? There's also Woman Wailer, Pain and Suffering and some others. Sometimes I think the devs might have gotten really bored when working on this game. In the Vesuvius Club there is a hidden room of sorts. Well, it isn't really hidden, it's just that the devs apparently forgot to wire triggers to the doors, so you can't open them because the interact icon just doesn't show up. I think you can get inside without using cheats, if you wait for some of the NPCs to go in and out and are lucky enough to enter before the door closes. I myself didn't manage to do that, and it's not like there's anything worthwhile inside, it's almost empty. Still, I found its existence and the fact that the NPCs use it even though you yourself can't pretty interesting. In the cemetery, Isaac's personal ghoul Romero keeps watch over the rising zombies. His name and occupation are a clear reference to the famous director George Romero, a man responsible for the popularization of the zombie movie genre after creating such hits as the Night of the Living Dead. Name's Romero. I'm the caretaker here. Well, that is, I don't exactly keep people from getting in, although that is part of my job. No. You see, I'm here to make sure nothing gets out. See, it's like this. Every night around this time for the past, oh, several months now, the dead have been getting up with an itch to stroll down Hollywood Boulevard. Nobody knows why, but they're working on it. Till they figure it out, they needed a volunteer to patch the problem, and I step forward. Problem temporarily solved, the Baron's happy, I get to shoot zombies, and guarantee I get my blood for another month. I've carved out a nice niche here. Romero's situation might also be a reference to the Italian film De la Morte de la Mort, known in English as the Cemetery Man, where a graveyard keeper also spends his time trying to prevent the rising dead from leaving the graveyard grounds. The next couple of details are in the infamous sewers leading to the hideout of the Nosferatu. First, in this log you can read about the workers called Whitman, Price and Haddad who disappeared in the sewers a long time ago. This is a clear reference to the movie The Running Man, where the characters with the same name also exist. Like our previous winners, Whitman, Price and Haddad. You remember them? Whitman, Price and Haddad. There they are, and at this very moment, they're basking under the Maui sun. Their debt to society paid in full. Near the entrance to the Nosferatu hideout, there's a computer with the so-called blue screen of death. It seems ordinary at first, but if you read it carefully, it turns out to be quite humorous. As a response to the error, you apparently have a chance to teach others to read, but also to donate money to the computer, which warns you about an imminent AI takeover and tells you outright that you can start panicking now. In the Nosferatu hideout itself, you can find a vehicle registration plate reading F-A-Q-U-A-L-L. -L. I'm not a native speaker of English, but it seems to me that you could possibly read that as fuck you all, which seems far too much on the nose to be a total coincidence. Well, oh yeah, sorry. The name is Mitnet. I'm in charge of computer systems, network security, that kind of thing. You're the new kid, right? The crazy boy. Me? Before all this, I was a hacker. Good one, too. There wasn't a system I couldn't crack. Telcos, DOD, you name it. One time, <laughs> I emailed the president all the nuclear missile activation codes. <laughs> and the FBI was shitting their pants. <laughs> the Nosferatu hacker, Mitnick, seems to be at least partially based on the famous real world hacker, David Mitnick. The Nosferatu tells you that he once emailed the president the nuclear missile codes, which is something that the prosecution in the real Mitnick's trial was apparently afraid of, and that's why he was kept in solitary confinement. Actually, I think it's quite possible that the in-game Mitnick just uses the real life's Mitnick's name as a pseudonym, as he would of course be familiar with him as a very well-known hacker. Finally, one of the quotes spoken by Gary in conversation 
is a direct quote from Roman Polanski's movie Chinatown. Forget it, boss. It's Chinatown. Forget it, Jake. It's Chinatown. And that's everything I've got to show you in this one. The next episode will be the last one, but it will also be significantly longer than this one, covering both Chinatown and the endgame maps. It has potential to be over 20 minutes of hopefully good content. As always, thank you for watching and please let me know what you think. That's all for this one and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!